from the Foundation for Recovery. I am the judge who started the Habitual Offender Court as well as the Youth Offender Court. One of the things we dealt with in the Habitual Offender Court were people who were being arrested repeatedly, and a lot of those members in that court were veterans, and I dealt with Peter Quigley quite a bit from the VA so that we can get the veterans the help that they need so they wouldn't be just processed and we can get them off the street. I know it's 30, 40 seconds. I went a little bit over. I apologize, but I want to thank you. Melody? Judge Hines, are you aware or are you familiar with Assembly Bill 187? No, I am not. Okay. Assembly Bill 187 became effective July 1st of 2009, establishing a veterans court. Do you support the veterans court? As far as I can tell, there's only one currently in Washoe County, but one has not yet been established in Clark County. Actually, they're working on getting one here in district court, and I know that we have a judge in municipal court who is attempting to start a veterans court also. It is not yet completed, and so when veterans do have issues, like I said, they go to Pete Quigley. Pete Quigley comes to me, and we try and get it on either my calendar or Judge Hastings' calendar, and we try and work through the issues because we do understand the issues. Okay, so you do follow Assembly Bill 187, which means once they complete a program, their record is expunged. That is except for in cases with domestic violence and DUI, and it doesn't get expunged. In our case, it gets dismissed. I don't believe we have expungement here, but they can seal it afterwards. We do everything we can to work with our veterans. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Michael Mazur. I have a question regarding the – there was an initiative that just was on the ballot this last year to create an intermediate appellate system. If I can have you discuss the pros and cons of creating an appellate court system here in Nevada. Well, I believe we need one. I think an appellate court is really important. We are at a system that is busting at the seams. As I told you earlier, Michael, when you and I were talking, when I took the bench, I had 3,700 open cases. Today I have close to 12,000 open cases, and I have half the staff that I had when I took the bench in 97. With those cases coming from me, when they get appealed, they trickle down into district court, and district court cases are doing nothing more than multiplying also. We have more judges in district court than we can house in the regional justice center. Now, all these cases get appealed, and the Supreme Court only has so much time to handle those cases. And so a lot of cases hang in limbo until the Supreme Court can get there. If you have an appellate court, then they can deal with a lot of these cases, and we can get closure a lot quicker with some of the cases that start off at my level. Thank you. What other changes do you see that could be made that would streamline the process at the municipal level? Well, I can tell you, we are as streamlined as you can get at my level, considering the amount of cases we have. What we really need, and the city council will kill me for saying this, but I'm going to say it, we need more judges and we need more staff. It's very difficult. When I took the bench, if you wanted to go to trial, you could get into trial within three months. Right now, I'm having a very difficult time, if you're not in custody, to get you in trial within six months. Many of them are taking up to a year before we can try your case, and that's not fair to the victims, and it's not fair to the defendants in either case. We do what we can, and when you're floating like we are, you just do what you can to survive, and we just go day to day. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, this is Jess Brooks. Thank you for being here. In the United States Supreme Court, Arizona began their recent decision was for officers to justify a warrantless vehicular search. They must have actual and continuing threat or a need to preserve evidence, even though the occupants have just been arrested and secured in the back of their car. How do you feel about that? Jess, I've got to tell you, I'm old, and I can't hear, so I only got half of what you said, and I have to apologize. All I heard was, what do officers need for a warrantless search? Am I wrong? I didn't hear all that you said. No. The recent Supreme Court decision in Arizona began, 
Is that is that better? I can hear you now. Yes. Very good. Um, their recent decision was um, they held that officers, in order to justify a warrantless vehicular search, they must have actual and continuing threat okay. or a need to preserve evidence, even though the occupants have been secured and arrested. How do you feel about that recent decision? Now, you're going to think this is odd, but I have to tell you that the judicial canons do not allow me to have an opinion on that. Uh, the judicial canons tell me that I follow the law. And I cannot tell you what my personal opinion is. I can tell you if that's the state of the law, and that what is what comes in front of me. I am bound and I've taken an oath to follow the law. I understand. Do you think that this would limit Metro's ability to perform their duties? I cannot answer for Metro. I can just tell you that when they're in front of me, I take a look at what the case is, and if there are motions to suppress, I take a look at the evidence and I take a look at the law. And my opinion doesn't matter when I'm on the bench with regards to the state of the law. Um, unless it comes for subject subjective measurements, and then I can weigh it. But the judicial canons do not allow me to answer that question. I'm sorry, and I know it's very frustrating, but that's a quick way to get in trouble as a judge. I understand. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Richard Hawkins. Are you getting this? Richard Hawkins. Okay. Uh, in the recent bankruptcy changes, we created bankruptcy appellate panels using bankruptcy judges in groups of three without expanding the regular appellate courts. Could that be a practical solution here in Nevada? I mean, historically, we've had multiple attempts to create a state court of appeals, and they tend to go down in flames at the ballot box. Perhaps setting groups of, say, three municipal judges for an initial appeal for a municipal court, or groups of three district court judges for district courts, would that be a practical solution if we're not able to establish an actual court? Let me, I know that you practice in California for a little bit with municipalities. In Las Vegas Municipal Courts, what we hear, we are the court of first appearance, and what we hear are criminal misdemeanors. Uh, we hear the misdemeanors, DUIs, DVs, prostitutions, uh, paraphernalia charge, traffic matters. We have no appellate jurisdiction whatsoever. Um, we hear the some minor code violations also. And so when you're asking me what I feel the solution would be for the appellate court, I could tell you that I just do not feel qualified to answer that. The reason why I thought that an intermediate appellate court would be appropriate is because I've actually had conversations with Justice Perigary when he was the chief judge about that. And that was a big issue that the Supreme Court was trying to put forward. And the Supreme Court asked us as members of the judiciary to support that. Uh, outside of that, I'm not qualified to answer what would be the appropriate way. And, and I'm sorry, I wish I could be more help, but there's things that can get me in trouble with the Supremes, and I'm just not going to go there today. Uh, Mike Murray, another former chore head here. Uh, I'm curious about your uh, repeat offender court. From what I understand about the amount of recidivism, is it basically every court a repeat offender court, or what is the, what is the rate in the misdemeanor well, courts? Absolutely not, because I'm going to tell you some numbers that are going to shock you. Um, in 2004, Metro came to me and they told me that they had some habitual offenders that we needed to deal with. Um, they had 25 targeted defendants. These 25 targeted defendants were arrested 8,157 times in their lifetimes. They were getting arrested 33 times a year. We are talking about repeat offenders. They spend more time in custody than they do out on the streets. So what we had to do is we actually had to sit down with counseling and with the team and address the issues for and multiple arrests. Once they joined what we professionally call HOPE Court, Habitual Offender Prevention Education Court, the arrest rate went down according to Metro statistics from 33 times a year to three times a year. If you go into my courtroom, I have a plaque on the side of my wall. All the graduates of my court from the HOPE Court are on that plaque. Three names are turned backwards. Those are because those defendants are back in the system. The other 29 names are successful, productive members of the community. Um, so not all of them are repeat offenders like the ones we addressed. Did I answer your question? Yes. OK. Oh, 
All right, Judge Kearns, thank you very much for showing up. Everybody give him a round of applause. And I was right on time. Well, good. You're good to go. I don't have to hold you. <laughs> All right, if we can get...